morning or good morning to everyone. Good morning. Everyone. We're very happy to be here. I'm Vincent Rosario, Director of Career Services. I'm uh, Professor Amy Ramson, and I teach in the in two programs actually. I teach in the paralegal program. I'm an attorney for like 40 years, which I always go like this because my students were not born, you know, when I started practicing. And I'm also criminal justice. Um, and that's really the course that we're going to talk about today. And I'm Lisa Knight Rosario, as I mentioned, Director of Career Services. A lot of the work that I do is collaborating with faculty such as Professor Amy Ramson in bringing in industry and programming to connect students to the workforce, as well as programming around career readiness. And just to give an overview of what we'll be talking about today, um, let's give you a little background on Ulster's Community College, of course, and uh, cybersecurity and why and why this initiative started in this collaboration that's been happening for some years now, as well as what started the initiative was an application of a, a career success grant. Um, Professor Amy Renson will go in further into the course issue in law enforcement. We'll talk about some of the topics that were presented and speakers and industry professionals that were invited into the course, um, as well as our partnerships and activities that happened in outcomes. So this is an image of our campus at Ulster Community College. We're in New York City in the South Bronx. Um, has anyone visited? Yay. Is it where is? And she attended. Where yes. is? Yeah, alumna. Yeah. Okay. And where is? Uh, Ulster Community College in the Bronx, New York City. Uh, City University. Oh, yeah. City University. So, thank you. Wonderful. So just to give you a little on the background of Ulster's Community College, um, we were created by an act of the Board of Higher Education, April 12, 1988, um, by Puerto Rican and other Hispanic leaders. It's fought very hard to um, open this Ulster's Community College for the community in the South Bronx. Um, and it's also named after Eugenio Maria de Ostos, um, which we celebrate him as well um, each year. Okay, so I'm going to start with why cybersecurity. We didn't have any cybersecurity at the college, and it is a very, it's one of the most important and newest um, fields, an open field. And so they offered a um, grant, and so we took it up. We decided to do the grant. So basically, the demographics of our college are where majority Hispanic, um, we've even had more than that, 63%. Mm -hmm. That's maybe uh, of late, but it's even been up to like 75, 85. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're a very large Hispanic um, demographic. We're an HSI, which means that we have at least 25% Hispanic. We have much more than that. And then when I was doing research, I realized that the Hispanic and Black minorities compose such a small minority of all the cybersecurity workers. 4% of the cybersecurity workers are Hispanic. And to increase recruitment, as I'm doing research, it's necessary to tap a, a group that was previously untapped. And so female is a group that's been and minority and staff. So basically, both of us can speak to this, but I just want to talk a little bit quickly. Um, they offered this grant, and I think I saw it right first from CUNY Central, which is you know, we have like 20 odd schools, and it's a course innovation grant plus career success. So when I saw the word career, it jumped out at me because Lisa, Ned, and I always work together all the time because I'm very career oriented. You know, I teach my paralegal classes. I have them doing service learning. And initially I did service learning because I thought that I wanted them to get skills, but it ended up being transformative in other ways. 
And I said, my God, this is like a perfect thing that I can work with Lisa and Ed. We also get along very well. We work together very well. Thank you. So through this grant, we got together, you know, um, as we usually do, and began writing what it would look like. Um, Professor Amy Ransom already had an idea of what she wanted to infuse into her course, um, which did not have a technical aspect or any cybersecurity within the curriculum. And so we dove in together. We looked at what around career readiness, looked at that career readiness competencies. We looked at the type of learning that's happening in cybersecurity and those competencies tying it in with um, criminal issues and law enforcement. And, um, you know, we got together, we, you know, brought up this grant and, you know, we were, of course, awarded um, the grant. And this is a, a great, like, this was, this was the initial start of this work. And this was started in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, and to date, we continue the work without the grant because the grant was tempered as always. Um, but we continue the work by engaging um, industry in the classroom and engaging the virtual component of the cybersecurity apprenticeship program. Um, and it's a course, this yeah. course that it's integrated into is a criminal justice course. So it's an issues course. So I was very lucky because they didn't want us to have to create a course because that takes too long to create curricula. So it had to be in a course that was already created. So the issues class is wonderful because I can put infuse anything I want into it. Um, you know, within certain uh, restrictions. And so I said, oh, this would be like a perfect course to look at cybersecurity, not from the coding point of view, the technical point of view, but to look at it from like the policy, law enforcement point of view, a regulatory point of view. And um, we have this phenomenal program, this criminal justice program. It's a dual degree program where the students are in the four-year college, John Jay College of Criminal Justice, which is the number one criminal justice college like in the world. So once they are in and they pass the classes, they don't even have to um, transfer. They just transition over. It's a phenomenal program. So we worked it out where we teach the first two years and they teach the second two years. And we did assessment, they did assessment, and they found that the people coming from community colleges, there's six of us, six community colleges, do better than the students who initially start at John Jay because we kind of, you know, scaffold and we help them through the program. Excuse me? May I ask a question? Oh, yeah, yeah, please. About how many students do you have in that pipeline? In the pipe, in, in the dual so like, program? The JCC. Oh, oh, you know, okay. See, things changed a lot because of a community college. So we started like with maybe 500 students in our major. Maybe we have 250 now, but um, you know, and then they just move along to J. Yeah. So, so no, I don't have the current data. With yeah, we don't have we can provide that. Aspect. I don't have it, but um, it's a it's a bulk of students where like so the, the largest program. Yeah, behind uh, liberal arts, we're the largest program in the college. All of a sudden, we had like five students, and then all of a sudden, because of the program and because it became such a hot thing, criminal justice, we went to five hundred. So we have been very blessed, you know. So the course itself, is, as I mentioned before, is issues in law enforcement. And before I used to teach maybe like use of force in the course or something like that. I would just pick and choose because I can choose whatever issues I, I would like to teach in the course. It's a 200 level. So the students have already gone through the 101, the intro and maybe penal law or something. So now they're ready to focus and there's a role of police course as well. So they're ready to focus on things that are a little, you know, issue minded. And, but what I do is I turned the entire course into a cybersecurity course from start to finish. So anyway, so what I do is it incorporates cyber crimes, cybersecurity techniques, regulatory compliance, and then we look at the law enforcement, uh, their point of view. And what I mean, the part where Lisa Neck comes in is that a lot of the jobs, not all of the jobs, a lot of the jobs require bachelor's degree and definitely certification to get into it. 
So we wanted to introduce the students to this career. And as the speaker was speaking, I realized, I just wrote this down. Um, a lot of the high schools in New York, in the Bronx, they don't even give the students in um, preparatory classes to start taking cybersecurity. They don't give them the math. So they can't even start in their high schools, you know, because sometimes when you come, you can start right away in a major. They can't even. They don't have the courses, they don't have the teachers, and they don't have the role models in their society. So basically, we were introducing this whole new field. Yes. And part of that career development and career exploration was to infuse early on in this 200 level course. Um, what are some of the skills? What are some of the certifications as well? Linking it to our programs on campus through our Division of Continuing Education and Workforce Development as well. Um, but bringing that awareness that these are these credentials that you can have and start um, including staffing credentials while they're studying at a community college and then continuing their, after continuing their degree at the senior college can also pursue additional certification. This provides them more of an advance you know, in terms of the job market right now. We're looking at um, professionals that come with many credentials um, competing with our students coming out of community colleges. So for us, you know, we're, we're committed to this work and we wanted to provide that opportunity for our students. And we see it in their faces. I'm, I'm in the classroom with Professor Ramson as well. We bring in the industry speakers. Um, the questions that are being asked, you know, very technical and very specific questions into the careers. And we're there to provide support and guidance for them as well. Yeah, and it's interesting because it was the first course in cybersecurity, but of course it's this hot open field. And so our everyone wants to have a cybersecurity program. So our president wanted it. And so I was asked to join um, an engineering professor and a mathematics professor, and we just put in, and we're waiting to hear, an NSF grant for a whole program in cybersecurity, and they're going to include my course. That's what made us very unique, was my course, I think. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the virtual apprenticeship, which is such a phenomenal part of it, because um, it gives a lot of skills. Yes. Hi. Hi um, you are considering the program of cybersecurity as a bachelor degree or a graduate degree? Oh, it's a two-year degree, mm -hmm. associate's degree. We give us, well, I guess we should say that we're, yes. we're a two-year college, two so college, it would yeah. be an associate's degree, but we would offer the entire uh, program. So we're, I think um, our chairperson of mathematics, she said she's already to do see. We didn't get the grant yet, but we are semi guaranteed But anyway, <laughs> it goes through a lot. So, um, we're going to have the program irrespective. She's already putting it through curriculum with, with my course in it, which will also grab another, you know, um, part of the college instead of just the computer science people. It's also going to, also going to grab the um, criminal justice students as well. So it's interesting, right? Okay. So the topics of the course, because I made it into an entire course, I don't know, it just happened. It, metamorphosized on its own. This person, I show a picture of him, Mr. Cohen, okay. he owns his own cyber security and IT firm. And he has been, I call him my cyber angel. And Lisa Nett got him for me. Yeah, so at the beginning, as we were exploring and looking for professionals in the field, I started doing my legwork and research using LinkedIn, of course. Um, so I actually met Mr. Cohen through LinkedIn. Um, we had a meeting, exploratory, discuss what we were you know, preparing for this course and the grants, and he was very excited to join us. Um, and fast forward to today, he's a key member of this course. He contributes to course curriculum. He comes to the classroom. He meets with the students, provides internships. So this is something that, you know, I just expanded and we were lucky to have this partnership. 
Yeah. Yes, yeah. And he's also very fun. Uh, he's he's also fun. Fun. And yeah. you know, he says to me every phone call and every interaction, but thank you for this. This is what he says to me. He does this for free, which so I wouldn't count on that, but I don't know where I think it's he's a little older, and I think like um, he was a little he was religious, a uh, Jewish, and I think he gives like Sadaka, like he gives like his back. And so I think this is his giving back, and he loves it. I mean, he loves it. He, mm -hmm. We have given a whole course in the Cyber Security Workshop, the whole entire college. So not only the students, but a lot of staff and professors came to it, and he mentored the students for that. He um, is our consultant on our uh, grant. I mean, yeah, on the NSF grant, because we are not cyber experts, none of us, under the engineering mathematics or me. And so we needed him and to help us integrate certification. So he's doing that. He comes into the classroom for three sessions every semester without fail. He had COVID and he did it online. <laughs> he's like a big human being. He's really great. Anyway, so he taught me a lot and he and I worked together and we did the um PowerPoints because he's used to teaching executives and he's not used to teaching students so I had to get him to bring it down or explain it more or make it more fun you know so like he teaches us all about like phishing and all about um, <coughs> mal malware so he teaches us about the crimes and then he teaches us about the cybersecurity techniques and he gives us stories and we have a whole video like on online dating scams, you know, because that's a student can relate to the students love it. And they're asking a million questions and he teaches them so much. So that's the first three weeks of the course. Then I teach the law, I'm a lawyer. And it's not so straightforward. I had to do a lot of research and take a lot of continuing legal education classes about it. So I teach them all about the law, about the policies, and also about the um, agency, the departments and agencies that handle cybersecurity. It's not very well known, I think. And then we have the special components. I think, did you get through the FBI agent partnership with them before? Yeah, did you yeah. get the FBI agent? Okay. Do you want to talk about that as well? Yeah. So um, part of the course, and, and this goes into the virtual apprenticeship piece, is we partnered with a company called IQ4. Um, initially, we were exploring how to bring, you know, different scenarios or cases into the classroom where students can get a taste or feel of what it would be like working in an online environment, you know, exploring cases in cybersecurity. Uh, so through this uh, company, we were able to have that for our students. It flourished as well, um, the, the relationship, and we connected with additional industry professionals um, one, which is our special FBI agent, Vlad, who still comes to our um, every class. class. He comes in every single class, and he's not even working in cybersecurity anymore. <laughs> he does, he's in another which area he's in now, but he yes, loves yes, yes. coming in, and we love having him. They get like all excited with the FBI because it's you know issues for law enforcement. Yes, and, and it, I, I think for us and for our students, again, it brings it to a level of this person is here, I'm connecting with someone, a professional in the field, but they're also, you know, explaining it in a way that makes sense, explaining it with real world scenarios you know, that are happening. And for our students, we're really intrigued by that and asking questions because some of these cases, they might have been victim of or they might know someone um, that has been, you know, impacted by a cyber crime. Um, and they also want to be FBI agents. So that's very exciting. Yeah, so it, it, it's a great relationship again to have um, these industry partners connecting with us and building on those relationships. Like it's not a one time, one semester, you know, it's been continuous throughout the years. And that's something we want to emphasize, right? It takes time, it takes, you know, support and collaborations to make these relationships continue and happen. Right. He'll even say to me, like the last time he goes, oh, I don't think I did such a good job. So cute. He does a fantastic job. They all love him. Then, because I take continuing legal education, I took a class in digital forensics. I don't know if you know what that is, but it is very hot and very new and very state of the art, very cutting edge. 
I mean, this guy, I invited him to, could you come into the classroom? Because he teaches in the University of Arizona. So of course it was virtual. And um, he came in and he gave us, I mean, it was like gold. Anyway, so he taught us about, let's say, because he used to represent defendants. And let's say their phone was taken or something. You know, and then the police want to get what's inside the phone. Can they force them to put their password in? You know, things like that. So it was really, really exciting. So he, he I told him, I said, we're not lawyers. You know, it's not a CLA. So he did it in a way that was very, very interesting. And my students, I think they understood. It was really, I was so excited to have him. Um, and it, like Lisa and I said, you bringing somebody from the outside, from industry, or someone that's not you, it, it has so much in class. And then the virtual apprenticeship stuff. So we have the three weeks of the cyber crime, cyber security, then I give them an exam. Then we have the legislation. Then I have them doing, um, I break them up. And they have to do learn about a cybersecurity topic. For example, um, we talk, what are we talking about deep fakes, deep fakes, misinformation. They have to do so a team, they have to do a PowerPoint and teach the class. And then we do it also on like data privacy. They have to teach the difference between data privacy and cybersecurity. So they each have like a team project. So I like to give them research to do. You know, I find that when I throw it out to them, it's much better because sometimes if you lecture, it goes in one ear and out the other, you know that, right? And then we have our speakers come and then the last five, six weeks is this virtual apprenticeship, depending on how much time I have in the class. They give you like four to eight weeks. Yeah, so that's um, Mr. Colton. And this is um, the, the digital science books. So the virtual apprenticeship. So this virtual apprenticeship in the first year that we started implementing was um, at no cost for our students. Now we're going to got us <laughs> have to negotiate a bit, but we got it for free. Um, but part of this is that the students are working on case studies as a team. So they're working as a team, they're developing these skills, these critical thinking, team or skills. Um, and similar to what we listed here, there's looking at fraud, sabotage, espionage, theft, of or intellectual property. Um, and in each scenario, they have to resolve an issue. So they have to view the case, discuss the case. So it's an online platform um, where they're working together. They have to submit information. And at the end, they're actually coming together as a team to present their findings, right? What, and, and their um, solutions to the, the case scenario. And what's so interesting is that um, they eat, because it's very hard to, um, if you're professors, you know, to give a mark, to give a grade to a group, a team. And I never do that. What I do is I individually make everybody individual. And here it's perfect because there's questions. They ask 10 questions, there's got questions. And each person has one of those questions. And so that for me is ideal. Uh, but then they have to work together. And I tell them teamwork is very important because every every job I've ever had as an attorney in, in college, you always work in a team. Sometimes some people do more work than other people. You have to learn how to negotiate. Sometimes you can tell on someone, it's complicated, right? And so I think the team, we're putting together as a team, and then there's always one person that rises to the top, that becomes the either the de facto or the du jour leader, depending if they switch leaders every week. So it's really, I think it's phenomenal. They're each in a role. They get an assigned role, whether it's compliance officer or security officer, or officer, and they have to um, evaluate and answer that question through the lens of their role. And um, it's very interesting because they have mentors who are real people working in cybersecurity. So not only do they have a professor, a main professor, and I also do it because um, I help with it. And also I get a little bit of a reduced fee. I've also being the professor and knowing what's going on. They bring in two or three mentors 
and each time the students present and they make it better and better and better, they call it a slide deck, but it's really a PowerPoint presentation. So they do it maybe two or three times. Each time they get critiqued, which is also a very good thing. It's very good for them to get critiqued and learn how to take it the right way, you know what I mean, instead of getting insulted. And they have to take that critique and they have to make it better each time till the end and then they have a final uh, presentation. But there's one thing that I tell the students all the time, I go, you do not understand. You're never gonna get this skill. No one's ever gonna help you develop this skill anywhere. And my daughter who just graduated from Cornell, every job that she went for, guess what they had her do? She worked in a team online, it was all virtual. She worked in a team, they looked how the team worked, and then she had to present individually. So I said, any job that you're gonna go for, this will train you to do it. And I was, I'm like so excited about this because of that, because I saw that this is the way that they test students now. So part of this, as we mentioned, collaboration and working together. Um, our office, the Office of Career Services, initially we were under the Division of Continuing Education and Workforce Development. We've since transitioned to the Division of Academic Affairs. Uh, a lot of the work that we do, and specifically that like I'm involved in, is working with faculty, bringing in industry review curriculum. So to be able to expand upon that work, it was a natural fit for us to be under um, academic affairs. Part of these collaborations and partnerships that started even prior to being within the same division is thinking about career, right? Our students are coming into colleges. Or the, the, one of the main things they're considering are, what am I gonna do after I finish? You know, Whether I'm gonna transfer or look for work. And including the career readiness portion, which we follow the NAIDS, National Association of Colleges and Employers definition of career readiness competencies. There are eight competencies. In addition, I recently um, received funding as well for a role approval grant to include digital learning and fluency within the classroom. Combining these two resources with the virtual apprenticeship and the skills that students are learning, they're able to get sort of bigger picture, right? It's not just a class. It's not just a virtual apprenticeship, but I'm actually learning skills and competency that I'm gonna be able to take with me. Our role is helping students articulate those competencies. Like, what does that mean? What did I do in this specific case scenario that I learned or developed a uh, critical thinking skills or communication skills and so forth? Um, so that's where our work comes in and tying in all of these resources that we have, combining these resources um, within the classroom and outside of the classroom as well through career services. Um, to make help those students make connections. Yes, Lisa comes into my classroom at the end. And she, we, I talked at the beginning to say, you're going to develop these competencies because you have to make them aware that they're developing, they have no idea. And then at the end, she comes in and she does a whole session on what competencies they develop. She matches them, she'll show you. And LinkedIn, resume, how you present this in uh, your resume or LinkedIn. Yes. And part of that is with speaking of badges and credentials. Yeah, um, they do get one. So it, we work with them to make sure that they include it on their LinkedIn profile for completing. They the get a security workforce alliance certification from this. And I looked at one of my students and sure enough, she has it there. <laughs> So this, you know, I, I again we emphasize this importance of collaboration and working together. But I didn't have the tools that um, Professor Ramson has. She didn't have some of the tools that we had. But working together, we can bring it um, for our students. So this is just an example of how uh, we've integrated. I've actually used combined both of the resources of the NACE career readiness competencies with the Grow with Google curriculum, which is, there are five learning pathways that students complete online so that they can assess within each pathway, what are the competencies being developed? Um, so this I prepared and I provide for the faculty and staff and students as well. And it's really understanding. I'm sure that. Somebody else. <laughs> I don't know. 
Yeah, we'll continue. Mm -hmm. um, but part of it is there's the preferred path is building your digital skills. We find that we have students that are at high level, you know, tech savvy, and then we have students who are at the beginner level um, that are just getting to know the computer and technology or, or may not have access to it um, at their home. So by providing these resources, they're able to make those connections. And we believe we're all the major companies. Yeah, so based on the course and the projects, um, we link what some of the competencies are. Thank you. And um, just help them bridge those connections again. So what I'm learning in the classroom, what I'm learning through this apprenticeship, as well as the uh, career readiness portion of it. Like how am I further developing myself for my future career? So students come out of the course with fluency on techniques of cyber crimes and cybersecurity, law enforcement, as well as career readiness. And this is just an example of um, how we connect and link. Like, yeah, like the problem solving, are. critical thinking, leadership, all of these things. They get almost every single one of them. Oh, the outcomes, assessment. <laughs> So over 140 students have participated in the virtual apprenticeship to date. Um, we were approved to apply and we did apply for an NSF grant to create a cybersecurity major. Just recently, the yeah. district attorney got it they, from the Bronx, they wanted to meet with us. Yeah, so we've actually been already meeting and in conversation. Yeah. Um, so they'll be working with our deans and uh, to inform the curriculum as well. For in cybersecurity, digital forensics. Yes, and then the importance again, the, the relationships that have continued throughout the year um, with Mr. Cohen, Mr. Lai, um, and also with Ben Boyce. Yeah, this last person, he, he writes letters for us. He's director of the counterterrorism um, division in Homeland Security in, in New York State, and he writes, he wrote us a reference letter. He's going to help us with the uh, major, give us internship, and it's just been unbelievable. And then this was a really big thing that yeah, they sent at uh, range. Yeah, so, so that first um, year of the uh, program, we put together a panel of industry professionals in collaboration with IQ4. It's a big um, it was right at the start of the pandemic. Yeah, the next day, the lab closed down, down. shut down. <laughs> yeah. So we already had, you know, signage and hand sanitizer. Yeah, yeah. we put signs, no handshaking. But um, it was a great event that brought together many of these yes. professionals um, to the, into the, into the. There's the, uh, Lisa Ned, yeah. and there's our president. Yeah. And that's um, our former president, David yeah. Gomez. And he gave us Charlie, yeah. NASA, yeah. He former gave astronaut. And there's a faculty. And he's also um, the math chair. And this is a student who is the president of the HMC, who is president of the SGA. So we really brought everybody yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you know, it was a great event, a great turnout. They spoke about you know all of what's happening now, what are the trends. Um, and it's happening again. So uh, our president is working on another industry. Yeah, we're going to have a summit in October. Yeah. Right. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, great presentation. Thank really you. informative. It's, uh, it seems like the curriculum is informed by a level of career connected learning. Is this representative of guided pathways, models, or frameworks at the college? Or is it just this one program? Well, I think overall, it, it's been infused in coursework. Um, part of the work that's happening now across campus and moving career services under academic affairs is really building the, that framework. Um, to make so it those career common. connected pathways, you know, following the um, industry clusters and um, building it into the, into the program. So it, it's happening. I, I think it started, you know, within just pockets of classrooms, and now it's growing. Yeah. How the community college, uh, in this case, also manage the student motivation? Because in cybersecurity area, wow, that's fantastic when you share with the student and you convince to for them to enroll in your class, in your college, university, tan, tan, tan. 
And something that the student know is when they can see Criminal Mind TV show, that in 10 seconds you have to show all the fingerprint problems. Oh, yeah. But in the reality, it's probably two weeks or three weeks. Right. Uh, how, you know, when they see something in 30 seconds or 30 minutes in the TV show versus the reality that caused probably a semester complete to know to understand that, oh my God. I probably said, I was not with that with that. No, that's not what I'm thinking about that. Let me go out. How you manage that in order to monitor? I know that you integrate the industry and that better than sometimes the book because show the reality. So how's the experience when you have to manage that the motivation to the retention for the student in the in the, in the campus? Excuse me. Uh, could you please say your name and the institution you're coming from? You okay, my name is Jose Cuoto, and I go for the Inter-American University. So <laughs> we really, you know, it, it's not like that instant in our classrooms. We're really teaching mostly theory. Okay. So we don't have that much practice. You know, especially in the first two years of, if they take an internship, that's, I think, a really good way. Right. We don't do, we will have that when we have the program itself. But since mine is just a singular course, I don't really have an internship or maybe even like a service learning mm -hmm. very good day. You know, yeah. I come out yeah. where they could do at least a day or two or something where they go out into the community. That's a good thought. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I I understand in terms of what they're coming in with what they're seeing on TV and you know everything's happening fast on TV. Well, that's why they're in <laughs> and that there is interest because of that. Yeah, which, but, is, but, which is also good. Yeah. But you know, we demystify that by bringing in the programs of apprenticeship and then the professionals to speak to that. So they get to ask those in the field the questions like, does that really happen? You know, I saw this on the show, which has happened. Um yes, but I, well, I think yeah. yeah. But once they, they realize, you know. The reality of what the work is, um, but still that it's important. It's 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 um fun, but I think it's it's work that's creative as well um, that they can contribute to, and they're and they're helping a greater community. I think overall that's sort of. Important. But I think the virtual apprenticeship is kind of in between. You know what I mean? It's kind of the bridge to the service learning, practical service learning, or the internship, the real internship. So it's kind of like, it's, it's a bit of a, you know, it, it's definitely a learning experience and you're definitely interacting with people yeah. who actually work in cybersecurity. So it is, I think it's a good bridge, yeah. you know, to give them kind of incentive. Like they say, oh, this guy, like they wanted to have mentors that were at, I think, John Jay, they took the same class at John Jay. And they now they have good jobs. So the kids can see that, you know. And it, it, we have to recognize the, the improvement of what you can really call it because you started it like a literally in the middle of the pandemic. And if you continue yeah, yeah, right yeah, now, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's the first one. And the other one is say congratulations for that because uh, cybersecurity is part of the career technical education. And we are celebrating the CT month. Yeah. The uh, yeah. career technical uh, oh, right, education right. celebration this month. So, Yes. Thank you. I didn't want to. Your name, please. Where you come? Carlos Vargas, president of Southeast Missouri State University. Um, a little bit of uh, uh, before my question, a little bit of information about what we do. We have a bachelor's degree in cybersecurity oh, wow. at the university. We actually have a master's degree also, and we have a cyber branch where students actually. Uh, practice, we have a, a team of students called the cyber defense team, and they compete every year oh, really? in the statewide competition to the cyber defense. And uh, okay. I would say we have won the, that competition uh, 10 years in a row. Congratulations. So, we, we, have, we have a great team, but yeah. one of the things that we're doing too now is we are actually um, starting to develop training, uh, non-credit-based training mm -hmm. that is aimed at the um, CEOs of companies and organizations mm -hmm. to provide them with the basic guideline as to how to respond to a cyber attack or to ransomware attacks. Mm -hmm. So that's, and we're gonna be doing that non-credit 
uh, specifically for CEOs. It's more. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to ask is if you're doing or planning on doing anything that is not credit related, non credit uh, training for individuals, so they can just sign up for the course and get some type of training that normally they would get in this academic. Well, we do offer um, certifications within our continuing education and workforce development yeah, division, session. which yeah. we actually brought in. Um, there was a, a program where it was funded, so it would be at no cost to students. We produced that at the last class. Um, but there are there are courses available um, through the non credit note side. Yeah, the continuing ed, and um, they we're working with them because they give certification. <laughs> And so if the students take those certifications in the continuing ed, that they can come into, we'll accept them yeah. and then into the situation. major. But not my course is so separate, you know what I mean? Yeah. But my course is going to be part of the major. But once we have the major, then they're going to be able to take that um, certification and they'll get, or a course, and they'll get credit. Or credit for prior learning. Yeah, yeah prior learning. learning. It'll be prior learning. Sure. <laughs> Um, with the last question. Okay, Jose Cotto again. And yes. just to share with you that uh, I'm right now today representing the American University, but I'm a uh, high school teacher right here in Puerto Rico. Oh, okay. And in my high school, we provide a cybersecurity uh, course Good. with in, included a pathway. So we have a connection with uh, military uh, family members' careers, and uh, the school is belong to the federal government, and we have a connection with the security staff there and we use that curriculum that the military member use oh. to know about the cyber security. Uh, it's a suggestion that the high school in Puerto Rico in the United States make connection with the yeah. military uh, Pentagon or forces in order to increase the curriculum and to use what information, probably software or something that help them develop this career because uh, he say they have a bachelor degree, master and in this way to, to improve. Many college universities right now they require what a basic knowledge in yeah. some career. They don't start to teach you the basic information. In some cases, they assume yeah. that you know the basic yeah. information. And at a high school, we can do that. Yeah. It's a collaborative yeah. university. Yeah. High school program actually has we got a high school program that's connected to the that's connected to the college and the continuing ed. That's connected to the college. So we already have one. I'm going to talk to him about it and maybe hook you up. Thank That's you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.